experiment here. What I'm doing is I'm going to do a remix of a remix that was done by some Japanese people, very creative people, going around YouTube and getting the most beautiful images or images certainly that they wanted to share. And I was so delighted that they picked the image that I had put up a long time ago of my mother making an apple pie in Berkeley, California. So what we're going to do now is go over to that image and we're going to play it for you. I'll put it on full screen and we're going to hit replay and take it off the zoom, I guess. Here I am in Grizzly Peak, Berkeley, California. And this is my mother's kitchen. And this is where I grew up since I was four years old. And now I'm going to teach you how to make Paula's apple pie, which was actually Jen's apple pie. And before her, her mother, my grandmother, Bertha. So the first step is two cups of flour. So here's my mom pouring a half a cup of oil so I can hold the camera. And she taught me how to do this many years ago. She had the feeling Jean Coin I never liked it. And now half a cup of oil we're gonna put cold milk, a new organic milk. <laughs> it's gonna go in. It's heavy to pour. And the secret is for the milk to be cold, a quarter cup of cold milk. Did you put salt in? No, I didn't put any salt. Spoon of cinnamon? Yeah. I never make. I never put nutmeg in there. I don't know how hard it is to put lids on. Hard for my age. Half a cup of sugar here, and cinnamon and nutmeg.
So thank you, all you creative people in Japan. That was a real treat, and I wanted to share it with all my 500 subscribers, so I'm remixing the remix. Thanks a lot. This is Paula Gloria from farther down the rabbit hole, telling you that there's a lot of beauty around if you keep your eyes open. See here, but you can see here very well. We can see how much to address the um, 
How much? How much? You have the sound right? Because sometimes people said you had too much music; they couldn't hear you. Okay, you can turn that down, or you can do the mics down for the future here. Not a problem. Sunday, 11, 46 a.m. Yeah, I call it Sunday, 1, 29 p.m. Hello, Paula. This is Hank with Washington Mutual, your mortgage company. Try to get in touch with you concerning your adjustable rate mortgage, which is Sunday, 3, 41 p.m. Nico, it's Paula. Sunday, 4.31 p.m. Hello, hello. Sunday, 5.31 p.m. Hi, Paula. It's Demetria. It is Monday night, and it is 5.30. And I am over at 15th Street in every place. It's called the Seat Bearers International Building. But anyway, they're having a Thanksgiving dinner here on the second floor. Uh, they're doing a little service in the chapel right now. I was invited. So if you're free and you're around the corner, just stop in and have some uh, turkey and stuff. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then there is on the second floor. Bye. End of messages. My mom's added just a little touch more flowers, sometimes you don't hit it right. But generally... Or if it's too stiff, add more. A little more oil or no? Half oil. Project, and that's going to be on December 6, 2007. So let's take a look at what they're up to.
brings through public access. The message is clear. Who are This is going to be December 6th at 11 p.m. at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, which is 537 West 59th. Eleven o'clock's a little bit late for me, folks. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there, but I really admire what they're doing. They're very creative, and also one of the people right here, Blue, is doing the live stream. Rabbit Hole Central. Scott, how are you? I'm good. Let me put you on the speaker. Who's done? Um, who's doing the documentary "Dying for Change"? And what I'm trying to do is there's something called the Colors Project. Have you heard about it, Scott? No. Uh, can you fill me in on it? Okay. On December 6th at 11 p.m., which is like kind of late for me, that down at the MNN Studios, they're going to be having the All University Choir and David Peel. Okay. Actually, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Just so we can hear you. Time for that, by any chance? Do you know what time is that? It's, a, it's 11 p.m. That's a problem for me because now that I'm working at the hat shop and all that. But, yeah, no, but, but But the thing is, is um, John Kowalski is one of the artists in the group. He usually paints himself blue. They paint themselves different colors to try to show how we can all get along. And if a different planet were to see us, what would they think? It's, and anyway, John Kowalski is the, the genius behind the stream that um, I'm trying to get going here, but it seems as though it's more PC compatible. Sure. But anyway, that's, that's kind of how it's involved with our stuff. And then the other thing was, Deandria wants to do a show here with John Kowal, uh, Joe Carranza. Do you know him? No. So I thought we would do that. Oh, this guy likes marijuana. Hang on just a second. That's the Colors Project. Okay, okay. I'm just switching it back and forth. Sure. When's, this, uh, when's this other interview you said? Is that your apartment, right? Yeah, I thought I thought you might be interested in the one with Deandria. Sure, and when is that? Do you have a date? Right? We, ha we haven't scheduled anything yet. Okay. So now that's, going, that's what's going on with me. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, you know, actually, uh, well, you know, like, like I'd like the audience to know is that I, I really love what you're doing. And it's a, it's a great example of taking back the media, as I guess Luke Radowski likes to call it, as he has said in my documentary, you know, we must be the media ourselves in order to get ourselves out there because, you know, sure as hell the, the, the news stations don't do it, you know. So things like YouTube, things like Rever, R-E-V-E-R.com, all these video hosting sites, that you're able to put your videos onto, I think it's great because it gets out to such a wide variety of people. So I applaud you on that. And, um, you know, 
Rabbit Hole Central. I mean, uh, I support it. I think everyone should check it out, you know, and, and you know, you have so many people. I mean, I've, I've checked out the um, YouTube hits. It seems like every, every day it's like over 100, you know, each day, and it just goes up and up and up, and it seems to be more and more and more listeners, so. No, I'm actually getting 2,000 a day. Really? Yeah, you're probably just looking at certain ones, I, I, because I guess, yeah, I can give you the passwords if you want, but it gives me, I've got 300 videos up. But I must say, I really admire how well done yours is. You know, those scary horror films like that stalker that was after that woman? Yeah. That was really excellent. I mean, I don't, I don't have those kind of production skills that you do. I think if we all work together, we can all somehow help each other out, you know? Uh, that's why I think, you know, everyone who has specific things that they can do is a help to another person. Like, an example, Nate Evans, who works with We Are Change, um, you know, he does a lot of the things that are done in Hollywood. And um, he's, I, I don't know if he had said that he was going to go to L.A., but he has the talent to make all of these computer-generated image uh, graphics. And, right. and it looks amazing. So, like, like that could help out people like us, you know, on right. our stuff, especially if they're if we're all working for the same cause. Even if we weren't working for, for the same cause, you know, I think whole artistry in it. You know, we're all artists and we all have to find a way to help each other out. Because if we don't help each other out, who will, you know? Right. I was even talking to Harold Channer today while we were waiting for John Kowalski to help him with his website and stream. Um, and I said to him that when you came along and you were videotaping us actually doing shows, it it, it helps us to kind of step outside of ourselves and look at what we're doing because he's been doing it for almost 40 years or maybe even over 40 years. Yeah. And then when I show him the comments on YouTube, this is like a new thing. And I was telling Maggie that a lot of intellectuals in New York like to read. They've never respected television that much. And it seems as though when you read, you're in a beta state, you know, your, your brain waves. Yeah. And then when you watch TV, you go into an alpha state, sort of a, a passive, meditative, very impressionable state. But it seems to me YouTube is a real paradigm shift because when you leave comments on the videos, you must be putting yourself into beta because you're writing. Sure. Reading and writing go, and, and then writing even more than reading. Reading is still a little more passive than writing. So that means you're even more active than when you're reading, which I think is extraordinary. I agree. No, and that's the, that's the, that's the interesting thing about it is because, you know, you have these two things that go hand in hand. It's, you're still thinking. You, when you read, you think, and when you write, you think. And, you know, for those who don't know, Paul and I had this, uh, had this conversation, and um, it was down at Eminem Studios about veganism. I remember the guy had said, you know, he turned vegetarian, and... And I remember we had talked about um, an interesting thing about the nervous system. I had told you, you know, I said, um, you know, that animals have a central nervous system and, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables don't. And that was interesting with what you said. Would you like to elaborate more on what you had said they do? And, well, that's, and as, that's... As a matter of fact, just because they can't talk, you know, doesn't mean that they don't feel. And I found that very interesting. I think... Now... That's what's so wonderful about working with you, Scott, because I knew I was laying out a real humzinger there, and hardly anybody, well, mostly people will say, that. well, that's just crazy and nuts, but it's become a very, very important part of my work in the future, and that is to explain the physicality of consciousness, such, such ideas as power objects. Saints have been able to charge objects that subsequently people later on can hold those objects and get the feeling, the energy from it, and it's oftentimes experienced as deep peace. And, I, and I'm not sure if I cited the example there, but I had the great honor when somebody came through here who was involved with a miracle where a cross was bleeding. And the, you know, they took some wood, and the master that did it didn't touch the wood, so it was maybe they stripped the bark off a tree and they formed a cross, because Jesus is generally uh, associated with this type of, of energy, you know, the crucifixion and the resurrection and, and all the misery of his life. 
and be with the Romans, and the Romans were crucifying people left, right, and central. So when this miracle was done by Westerners, uh, the cross eventually was bleeding, and I, I witnessed a miracle like this the very first time I went to the ashram. But I was so stunned, so overwhelmed, that I didn't really hook the energy. But I think the Master, you know, encouraged me to stick around the ashram because he could see I had a potential. Yeah. And, and subsequently, I was not in this particular group. I think I was actually headed off to Kashmir to try to do a show where we brought some bandwidth out of Kashmir, which didn't work because they didn't have enough bandwidth out of the valley. And I went down to Bangalore, so I was so riveted with my TV project that when I was sort of gently invited back to the ashram, I sort of indicated to the Master that I was doing something that I felt was more in harmony with my sole purpose. But a couple of my friends were in on this, and one of them, he and I have always had a nice connection. When he came to New York, he took me into Gramercy Park, cross on my head and we only had less than a minute you know how it is in New York everybody's busy and I thought I said God Lotar you really don't chintz on the rose the rose oil because real rose oil came from Bulgaria and it's expensive and he must have slathered this this piece of wood with the oil well he told me later he goes Paula there's no oil on that wood 